Thank you for joining us today. We are discussing the exciting things happening in the divisions of the pediatric gastroenterology and hepatology at Mount Sinai Kravitz Children's Hospital and at the Susan and Leonard Feinstein IBD Center at Mount Sinai and the importance of collaboration of the care across the specialities. The experts here with us today are Dr. Marla Dubinsky, Chief of the Division of Pediatric Gastroenterology and Co-Director of the Susan and Leonard Feinstein IBD Center at Mount Sinai Dr. Joanne Lai, Assistant Professor in the Division of Pediatric Gastroenterology at the Mount Sinai Kravis Children's Hospital. Dr. John Pukovalis, Chief of the Division of Pediatric Hepatology and Vice Chair of Faculty Affairs at the Mount Sinai Kravis Children's Hospital. Let's start off with Dr. Dubinsky. What is unique about the Pediatric Gastroenterology Program? Well, thanks for taking the time today uh, for us to all discuss the exciting things as you mentioned. But the excitement of Mount Sinai and GI really dates back um, already starting in 1932 um, when Crohn's disease was first discovered by Dr. Burl Crohn's at Mount Sinai. Not only was the disease discovered here, but many key firsts in the field happened right here at Mount Sinai. We have become the gold standard of IBD care. Although IBD care has been delivered at Mount Sinai for decades, Thanks to the leadership and our wonderful philanthropic partners, we were able to open the Susan and Leonard Feinstein IBD Center in 2015 with the vision of creating the first ever fully integrated IBD Center where people with IBD of all ages and their families receive personalized holistic care. By being co-located, the pediatric group interacts seamlessly with the adult IBD group, which fosters amazing innovation, shared clinical findings, and research collaboration that can only happen here at Mount Sinai. I personally had the good fortune to practice IBD care in this setting, and that has helped me become what I think to be a better clinician, as I've been able to see how important pediatric care is as kids with IBD become adults with IBD. The same could be said for how our pediatric GI team approaches care in general you really gain an appreciation of how important good care is, no matter what the clinical condition is, and treating it early. While IBD includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis remains a focal point of our GI care at Sinai, we've been able to build strong boutique type programs like IBD built around the needs of the community, locally, regionally, and nationally, and of course our fantastic transplant program, which Dr. Bukovalis will speak more to. We've built a very strong division for clinical care as well as education and training with the goal of training the next generation of academic GI clinicians and researchers who will take our model of care and bring that to the community they then serve. As a division chief, I cannot be more proud of the team we've built and each of them bring their own expertise to the table. In in addition to the general GI conditions, such as reflux, constipation, we have expertise in eosinophilic, allergic, GI diseases, as well as functional, sometimes referred to as motility disorders and celiac disease. I'd like to now introduce a fantastic member of the GI team, Dr. Joanne Lai, who can speak to and highlight a few of our key comprehensive programs we have built here at Mount Sinai. Welcome, Joanne, to Great. the discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Marla. Um, I'm excited to be able to share um, with you all about uh, two of these really unique programs that we have here at Mount Sinai. Um, and I think these programs really showcase um, the, the good outcome and the good that we can do for patients when we work as multidisciplinary teams. Um, so first is our intestinal re rehabilitation program, um, where a team that includes myself as a pediatric gastroenterologist we have our transplant surgeons, Dr. Kishore Iyer and Dr. Jang Moon. Uh, we have pediatric surgeons, dietitians, nurses, social workers, and radiologists we also work closely with. And we use the latest treatments to help children regain full use of their intestinal tract. Um, we take care of many children who, for a variety of reasons, may have lost function of their intestines, and they're not able to receive all their nutrition through their GI tract. So this includes um, children who may have had a portion of their bowel resected and have short bowel syndrome, um, or they may have been born with certain conditions where they're unable to, to receive all their nutrition through their GI tract. Um, they may have motility disorders, 
Um, and they all have nutrition that's needed through their IV called CTN. And these children will have a central venous catheter um, and they often also have feeding tubes uh, for their nutrition. And so our team really helps families um, have the ability and confidence to care for their, their children at home. Um, we work to manage their diet, their IV nutrition, uh, we use medications and surgeries when it's appropriate to restore the function of their intestines so that they can grow and thrive. Um, you know, research really has shown that these multidisciplinary team um, teams can really improve the, the outcomes and the care of patients. Um, and we have seen the same in our program. And our goal is really to provide um, all that families need um, to help restore uh, their, their use of their intestine. But there are times where that's not possible. And if intestinal transplant is the next step, um, our same team also walks them through that journey um, and cares for them through intestinal transplant um, if that's the next step that needs to be taken. And I've always been drawn to care for children with these complex disorders and especially this intestinal rehabilitation program really, really allows us to be involved in the care of children from um, very early on in life, sometimes from day one in the NICU. Um, and we can walk them through a journey that can be sometimes long and hard, um, but we are able to really celebrate the little steps and, and accomplishments that come along the way. Uh, we are really celebrating when children are able to have their central line removed um, and they're able to eat and grow um, with use of their GI tract. Um, in a similar way, I've been working with a team of um, other sub pediatric subspecialists, um, including pediatric pulmonologists, um, ENT doctors, um, to start this aerodigestive program. And so this program takes care of children who have disorders that involve um, their upper airway, their lungs, and their GI tract. Um, and so these are all also patients who may have a variety of different conditions that they could have been born with or, or developed over time. Um, and often there are many specialists who are involved in their care. Um, and so this allows you know, patients and their families to come to one place where they're able to meet with all these different specialists. Um, we meet together as a team, um, both before seeing the patient and after, so that we can come to the family with a unified plan of care. Um, so rather than seeing you know, different providers at different places who may say different things, we're able to really speak and work together as a team um, and communicate that to the families. And sometimes if there are procedures that need to be done, like endoscopy or bronchoscopy, uh, we're able to do that together um, so that patients don't need to undergo multiple examinations and multiple um, episodes of anesthesia. And this is really beneficial for our families as well. Um, so these are just two examples of this multidisciplinary team approach to care for our children um, and their families. And I think it's a really great way that we can provide a um, really unique um, and special care for our patients with complex medical needs. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Bukavales, what is unique about the pediatric liver and transplant programs at Mount Sinai? Yeah, I think Marla outlined it uh, very nicely. Um, we're essentially a hospital within a hospital, and what happens here that's special at Mount Sinai is our close interactions with our adult colleagues and with other specialty groups. Our liver team, specifically the uh, hepatologists, Dr. Ronan Arnon, Jamie Chu, Irini Batsis, and myself, all come from different backgrounds and training, have different connections. So we then can bring in expertise from outside of the center and through our connections, not only within the tri-state area, but across the nation, and essentially across the world. So when you're coming to see us, you're really speaking, you know, there's, a, there's a whole group of people that are behind us uh, uh, helping with uh, information and decision-making. At the same time that that's going on, we have very um, exciting research going on that's bringing new knowledge into our group. But ultimately, the overall goal is to really improve the outcome for kids who have liver disease. And this can be as simple as just some simple medication, change in diet, uh, but it also can go all the way to transplant. And we're lucky enough to be uh, to uh, be part of the uh, Reconanti Miller Transplant Institute led by Dr. Sandy Florman. And that is a, a internationally um, recognized transplant institute. And we're a part of that. We get to use their expertise and their uh, infrastructure as a foundation for our pediatric program. And this is really exciting. At the same time, we get to interface with 
our, our metabolic physicians, uh, Dr. Diaz, Dr. Oshi, both of whom are experts, and we actually, um, uh, for inherited disorders of metabolism, which are increasingly treated with transplant. This is a very exciting opportunity in which our, the two groups coming together, the whole truly is greater than the sum of the parts. So I think the combination of these, um, the, the commitment of our four core people, physicians, our nurse coordinators, our core team, the transplant surgeons that support us, Dr. Iyer, I think that uh, Joanne mentioned, and Dr. Moon, and Dr. Florman, of course, the uh, entire in Transplant Institute, and the interfaces so we have multiple different people gives us a really unique environment, but in the end, it's focused on the patient. And that's where we, as, as, as Joanna and Marla both said, that's what our ultimate goal is. And we're just pushing the envelope. We are not satisfied. And our commitment is not just for a one-year survival or a five-year survival after transplant, it's really 80 years. And that's the kind of uh, commitment that we have. And I can say that uh, I'm really proud of our team. Um, uh, they are... Um, not only colleagues and professional colleagues, but people whom I respect for their honesty, their commitment, and their um, genuine um, excitement about being part of this great um, uh, opportunity. A question, uh, how is the access of the liver and the GI team, you know, how do they work together? How do these two areas of expertise line up and collaborate? You know, although we're separate in terms of sort of the group works under the uh, Transplant Institute and we more so work under pediatrics as a, as a division. We are, John and I are in step and in sync because at the core of liver and GI is our fellowship right. and the collegiality that we as colleagues all at the center want to really build a future legacy of leaders and if we can do that in transplant and we can do that in the variety of gi disorders that we manage we've been successful for john and i it's about building a legacy it shouldn't stop with john and i it needs to continue and our job you know as leaders and as chiefs um, and Joanne is also one of the associate directors of the fellowship program. She, you know, our goal is centered around training the future leaders. And I think the fact that John and I both agree as to the purpose uh, of building one, having a cohesive team, because as he mentioned, um, his team, we have Dr. Bankoff, Dr. Pittman, Dr. Spencer, Dr. Duncan, along with Dr. Lai, everyone is sort of building their niche building that boutique that we can offer. And I think that's how John and I are training our young faculty as well as our fellows. So I, John, maybe you have some additional words about how we've integrated our philosophies into training future leaders. Well, I, I think that the, um, I can't say anything, I can't say anything more that's more important because I think it's, it has to go past us in a sense we're planting uh, seeds that uh, we may not uh, see in the future. So I think these seeds are the fellowship, uh, and we, these, and Joanne is helping to lead this. Our fellows are spectacular, and I think that they reflect the teamwork, the commitment to patient care uh, that goes across both divisions. Our divisions really are just one family. It's just two parts of one big family. And um, I think the closeness that we have, both uh, how we're close to each other, uh, we, walk, we see each other every day, but it's, it's not only a physical closeness, it's actually an emotional and a shared understanding of what we're trying to achieve. Ultimately, uh, really changing the outcome for these kids. I think when we first started our careers, you know, IBD, there were limited options for therapy. Now it's ex exploded now into ways to take care of uh, patients. Mm -hmm. Same thing for intestinal failure and definitely for transplant. This is in 25 years this has happened and we're building for the next 25 years because we know that the kids we're taking care of today are gonna to be a, a young, young adults in 25 years. And that's what we're aiming for. Perfect, how do your teams collaborate with other specialities uh, at the hospital, like you know, surgery and the operative team? We don't, we don't even, um, and I think it's not even collaboration, it's just an extended part of our team. I mean, the surgeons are, the surgeons and our metabolic colleagues, our kidney colleagues, we all, we all know each other, we work closely to each other. It's a, it's a personal uh, relationship. I think that the advantage of the hospital within the hospital concept is that it's smaller and we have tighter and closer relationships. And if we are um, 
if we have that share, that commitment, it's really, really easy to work um, on. I think that Joanne embodies that. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've asked Joanne for some help with procedures, and she drops whatever she's doing to help us with that. And there's never a comment about that, about uh, saying I'm too busy or I have something else to do. She just, what can I do to um, help um, and collaborate with you? It's just the whole mindset. It's interesting because in liver, you are in step with the surgical team and IBD. You know, a lot of patients come to us for surgical recommendation. Yeah, yeah. They failed therapies. They're now coming. But I think, Joanne, maybe you could speak to, you sort of represent that comprehensive across different divisions as well as surgery. So maybe describe an example of a team that would be put together specifically, for example, for aerodigestive. Yeah, I was just about to say, I think, when we care for the patient, we really have to care for the patient as a whole. And it doesn't, you know, many times these things really aren't distinct and, and that's how we have to work together as well. Um, so for aerodigestives, um, for, the, for this program, you know, often there are some procedures that are needed, um, particularly with the um, ENT doctors. And so um, I can even think of, you know, some cases that we have planned coming up where we're able to use um, one, one time in the OR to be able to not only do a triple scope, but address um, dental issues and complex ear issues, um, really trying to make it easy for the families and easy for the patients so that they don't need to be, you know, undergoing uh, multiple procedures. Um, similarly for our intestinal rehab, you know, there really is many kind of role for surgery um, when, you know, medical treatments aren't working or, you know, we sometimes need to um, address, you know, certain dilation of the bowel or lengthening of the bowel. Um, and, and the way our team works is that our, our surgeons are present there uh, as we're seeing patients as a team. And so it's a, a very dynamic process. Um, and like John said, I, I really don't see us all as separate um, divisions, separate groups. Um, we are a, a small group, a small family, and I think we all really work together very well. One thing that the audience, you know, could take away just even from this interaction, this virtual interaction, is the respect we have for one another's expertise and also um, to really highlight sort of the culture of Mount Sinai. It, it really is the culture of the family and creating um, sort of this family around patients and their families who need this type of holistic, you know, patient-centered care. And I think between the three programs we highlighted today and the multiple programs we have uh, at Sinai, I think, you know, the understanding the culture of Mount Sinai is, is really critical, understanding why Mount Sinai um, is the place for you to bring your, you know, children or refer patients with complex chronic conditions because we have built the team around the needs of the community. Well, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you stopping by for our Facebook Live. Hope all is well with everyone and thanks again.